As we talk about what happened in Windsor, which was a, a very different animal from what happened in Ottawa, one of the big things that the government really held to was the cost of trade, the value of trade that was moving across that border every day, supposed to be moving across the Ambassador Bridge, which was brought to a standstill for that one weekend. And I don't want to diminish this because what happens across the border is incredibly significant. I am from southwestern Ontario. I've crossed the Ambassador Bridge many times in my life. You always see trucks that bring them back auto parts, groceries, a number of other things, billions of dollars worth of trade, or uh, actually, as the new unit of metric goes, millions of dollars worth of Disney Plus subscriptions, millions of, of Disney Plus subscriptions every day cross the border back and forth. That is the new unit of measurement in the inflationary economy. How many, uh, how much does it cost? Uh, $14. No, no, no. Give it to me in Disney Plus subscriptions. This is, of course, uh, courtesy of Christian Freeland, the Deputy Prime Minister and Prime Minister who's been posting deficits worth many, many Disney Plus subscriptions, talking about what Canadians can do to withstand these inflationary pressures. This was our Finance Minister and Deputy Prime Minister's advice. I personally, as a mother and wife, look carefully at my credit card bill once a month. And last Sunday, I said to the kids, you're older now, you don't want to watch Disney anymore. Let's cut that Disney Plus subscription. So we cut it. It's only $13.99 a month that we're saving, but every little bit helps. Now, Christian Freeland makes somewhere in the range of memory serves of like $270,000 a year. So not an insignificant sum, $270,000 a year uh, divided by the uh, $13 a month for a Disney Plus subscription. That is 20,769 Disney Plus subscriptions a year that Christian Freeland makes. Now she was roundly mocked for this comment online and I'd say rightfully so. And to be fair, the advice itself of auditing your household expenses and cutting what you don't need is not bad advice. The problem is that Canadians are already doing that. Canadian mothers, Canadian fathers are already faced with it. The problem is not that they don't know what they're spending money on. The problem is they know exactly what they're spending money on because every time they go to the grocery store, things that they used to be able to buy without even looking at the price are now things where they have to question, is this really something I need? And with Christmas coming up, the issue is not going to be solved by just cutting the Disney Plus subscription. So as I said on Twitter, Disney Plus is the new avocado toast, where it's the thing that someone from a place of economic privilege tells you is really this superfluous, extraneous thing that you don't really need that doesn't actually deal with what the source of your problems are. Now, to Minister Freeland's credit, she seemed to understand this. And when you're getting attacked by the left and the right in this country, generally speaking, I think it's safe to say that you are not the bastion of unity. You are just someone who has managed to step in it profoundly. But she did amend her comments yesterday by talking about, in true woke language, how she has to recognize her privilege. I think uh, I want to start by really recognizing that I am a very privileged person, for sure. Uh, like other elected federal leaders, um, I am paid a, a really significant salary. And I know that that puts me in a really, really privileged position. And I really recognize that it is not people like me, people who have my really good fortune, who are struggling the most in Canada today. The people who are struggling in Canada today with today's high prices aren't people like me. They're not federally elected politicians. They are people across the country who earn a low income, who really do find that today's high prices mean they have to make difficult choices about what food to buy, 
about whether to buy groceries or pull together the money to pay the rent. So I 100% recognize that. And in fact, it is that recognition which shaped so much of the fall economic statement. To be fair, I don't think there's anything wrong with what she said right there. I mean, the fact that she has this condescending tone whenever she says anything might just be an aspect of how she communicates and how she delivers remarks. I think it was a much more tone-aware and self-aware comment than her comment about how, oh yeah, we're all struggling. You know, I could only afford 21,000 Disney Plus subscriptions, so we decided to cancel our Disney Plus subscription last month. And by the way, I, I mean... There's a difference between doing it because you think it's prudent budgeting and doing it because you have to. And that was why the remark was so tone deaf, because we're not talking about cases right now where people are looking at which discretionary items they want to live without to save a bit. We're talking about people that don't even have the benefit of discretion where they have already trimmed down their expenditures so much because they have to, not because they want to, not because they're choosing to, because they are being forced into this. And I'm sorry, but when people are going to the gas station and not able to afford to fill up their tank because they just went grocery shopping or vice versa, they you know can't afford to go grocery shopping because they decided that they could get to the grocery store and that used up all their gas, especially in rural areas where people who want to load up on Costco runs or whatever are driving an hour, an hour and a half. This is not an inexpensive thing. And people are forced to make very difficult choices. And to be fair, when Christia Freeland was asked, what's your advice to those people? There isn't any, because the problem is not the people's. The problem has not been brought on by these people. The problem has been in part unleashed by global economic circumstances, but exacerbated by government. A government that has increased the carbon tax this year, a government that talks about tax relief and giving people their own money back, but a government that isn't actually interested in not spending money, a government that is adding to these pressures. So there is no answer. And that's why things are going to get, and I hate being the bearer of bad news, so much worse before they get better, because we're not at the point where some little nifty household budgeting tip is going to get you out of this financial hole. Government, which has stopped you from working, if you've worked in certain sectors for much of the last two years, government, which is putting more regulatory charges and more taxes on you while claiming it's not. Government, which is still spending money it does not have, and taking that money in the form of just running off the cash printing machines and also taking it from people that are ostensibly in the government's eyes able to withstand a little bit of an extra tax burden but are still themselves struggling. It's that government that has to own up to its role in this. And it's so insulting that this minister, this finance minister, thinks she can relate to what ordinary people are going through right now. And she says, oh yes, it's her privilege and her understanding of how difficult it is that has informed the fall economic statement. Well, let's look at the fall economic statement because uh, Christian Freeland says, oh yeah, we're on track to balancing the budget. Don't worry about those hundreds of billions of dollars, sorry, uh, you know, tens of uh, billions of Disney Plus subscriptions of deficits that the government has been racking up. Uh, we're, we're on track to balance it by 2027-2028. Uh, so she's convinced that in the next seven years, will be at balance. Well, if you talk to the parliamentary budget officer, which is uh, ideally more responsible about its calculations because it's not rooted in partisanship, uh, they're saying that the revenue in that budget is going to be $11.1 billion lower than what the government is projecting. And interest charges are going to be $2.8 billion higher, which means the year of balance budget in 2027, 2028, that Christopher Freeland is promising is going to be a year with a little tiny, teeny, itsy bitsy $10 billion deficit. A $10 billion deficit, or to keep with the trend here, uh, that is a 83.3 uh, million Disney Plus subscription deficit. Uh, my math's a little rusty there. You'll have to bear with me.